Technology is moving fast. Every day that passes, we get one step closer to full dive. Our world has been saturated with virtual technology in theme parks, dentists, doctors, games and movies. These technologies and developments are pushing us closer to the dream that is full dive. But how close can we get today? In this video, we'll take a look at the technology available today and see how close we can get to the holy grail that is full dive. First off, BCIs or brain computer interfaces. I wanted to start with this because in the future, BCIs will be the only input method. No headset, controller or haptic vests, just a computer interface to connect you to the virtual metaverse. Currently, there are no commercially available BCIs that can input data into the brain, but there are options to aid with disabilities such as sight and hearing. But there is technology out there available today that allows you to use the power of your brain to act as, say, a third arm by reading data from the brain. This company is Luxidlink, and what they do is provide the hardware necessary to track EEG signals to the brain and then use this data to control certain functions. They currently have some demos that allow you to use this new brain power to, say, shoot fireballs at targets. While this is more for developers in its current state, the end goal is for this to be used in all headsets. Gabe Newell, CEO of Valve, has expressed a real interest in this technology. He talks about the huge potential of, say, having tentacles as a third arm and how the brain is malleable enough to allow for extra appendages. Think about it. Imagine having real telekinesis in a game just by thinking about it or using the brain's power to control extra game features like teleportation. This technology will bring us into a whole new level of immersion and we are just getting started. Haptics. Now this is the only technology I feel is good enough in its current state. The Tesla suit is a full haptic device that can provide stimulation all over the body. It can recreate the slightest sensation to being shot with a bullet. This is pretty much the closest thing to the haptic vest shown in Ready Player One. But that's not all it does. The Tesla suit allows for full muscle stimulation. So you could even freeze certain muscles in place. The new suit can also provide tracking data to allow full body tracking and monitoring. From heart rate to blood oxygen, with the right developers, you could have an incredibly immersive experience. The potential of electronic stimulation is huge as one of the biggest issues in VR is surface tension. At the moment, you can simply pass your hand straight through any object with no resistance. Electronic stimulation of the muscles may be used to freeze you in place if you decide to do so. And on that note, it brings me to controllers. Now, where things get really exciting, in my opinion, is the controllers. I mean, we have the standard controllers in Oculus, HTC, and Valve have slightly more advanced controllers with their knuckle controllers, which allow you to have individual finger tracking, but it doesn't really provide you with any more sensory data, any more feedback. That's where companies like PlayStation are doing things a little bit differently, where they provide their haptic technology and use their resistance of the trigger buttons to provide extra feedback, so say pulling a bow, shooting a gun, it will feel different depending on the programming. But still, it doesn't provide a layer of realism that other controller manufacturers do. And that brings me to a company called HapticX. Now this controller is incredible. This is the future of VR. It allows you to feel weight. There's resistance that pulls back on each individual finger. So if you touch a wall, see a texture, you'll be able to feel that texture on the wall. Raindrops, you could feel that on your hand. So when you go to grab a mug, your hand will be fixed in that position. You will not be able to crunch that mug like you do on games now. This really provides an extra layer of immersion because you could imagine just simple things like shaking hands with someone would suddenly be a natural thing to do. Now these controllers are bulky and they are pretty much for development teams like companies and stuff. But the point is that this technology is possible today and future iterations will be most probably commercially available for me and you. So we can get a sort of slim down version most probably because if you look, the controllers are absolutely huge. You really wouldn't want to punch your fist through the wall because that probably cost about three grand if you do so. But the technology is there. That's the main thing. And what's interesting with these different technologies, you're really starting to see that the technology that we've been wanting for, say, a Ready Player One experience is already here. It all just needs refinement. Now, the next one I'm going to talk about has caused the most issue. It's been the most difficult to solve and is the least natural of all of them. And that's locomotion. Locomotion has been the biggest obstacle in virtual immersion so far. The standard movement methods in most games are teleportation or thumbstick, and both of these are not very natural, and can also be the main cause of motion sickness. 
Thankfully, there are solutions out there. Some look amazing but show little promise, and others are leaps in front of the commercial audience. First up, Infinidec. When I saw the original showcase of this treadmill, I got really excited. This is the solution we have all been waiting for. Fully fledged natural movement in VR. Nothing more needs to be added to make this an incredible experience. It was even used in Wade's van in Ready Player One. Now the issue I have, there has been no clear movement to shrink down or make this a viable product for the home. And it doesn't seem like it's made developmental progress, it's just stagnated in its current form. They might have something to show in the next year or so, so I hope to be proven wrong because this is the holy grail of virtual movement. Now for the home. By far the best locomotion platform you can buy today is the catwalk. Their slide mill system allows you to walk and run and do pretty much anything you can do in the real world and they have to extensively developed this product specifically for the home. They smash every Kickstarter fund they do and it's no surprise, it's an incredible piece of equipment. Not quite as realistic as an actual treadmill but sliding your feet is something you can quickly adapt to. Last but not least is headset. This is where the most funding and development has been focused on. There are so many headsets to choose from and they all provide different specializations. The Quest is an excellent price, wireless headset with a fantastic all round features. The Index is a powerhouse PC based headset with silky smooth frame rates. Pimax has an incredible field of view of up to 200 degrees and the Vario has a resolution that's comparable to reality. All these headsets provide a little something we want in the headset of the future and companies like Meta and PlayStation are paving the way for the next generation with eye tracking, face tracking and augmented reality features. You can clearly see we are getting closer to full immersion and it's not quite full dive, but at least we can get a taste of it today. Now the biggest hurdle with making a complete virtual experience is none of this tech. You can have the best tech in the world, but if the software isn't there, then none of it is. In Ready Player One, the planet wasn't obsessed with the tech, it was the oasis. So this is what we need right now. To level up our immersion, we need our version of the oasis the metaverse. Meta is leading the charge with games like Horizon, but this is a far cry from anything close to that immersion level. I guess we'll have to wait and see and what different companies come up with. I'm sure PlayStation probably have a solution for their version of the metaverse, and several other companies do too. So to summarise, if money was no option you could create an incredible rig. You could use your brain as an extra controller to control certain functions like telekinesis, you could feel the rain on your skin, and gunshots and physical interactions with your body with the Tesla suit, or pick up and feel virtual objects with real resistance and texture with Haptex, or walk, jump, run with virtual treadmills like Catwalk. We've come so far with virtual technology, and we now have a clear path to mind-blowing experiences. All it takes is the right development to shrink this down to more viable products. For more full dive or virtual content, I have two playlists up on the screen now. I really hope you enjoyed the content. If so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.